The danger with leverage ETFs is that people only see the upsides and get burned badly. So in this video, I'll share what I learned about the leverage ETFs and as you know my style, this includes a little bit of math of course. Leverage ETFs as the name suggests, includes leverage which implies some amplification of some sort. Now that amplification can come from debt that is borrowing money to boost returns or leverage can also be achieved through special contracts to guarantee a price which we call derivatives. I'm oversimplifying here of course but this is the general gist of it. Therefore, with those debt or derivatives, a leverage ETF can amplify the returns of the index it's tracking. But here's the thing, it doesn't quite replicate the index. To understand this, let's take an example. Let's say you have an index at 100 points. The next day, the index jumps to 103, which equates to a 3% gain on the day. With a normal ETF, if you invested £100, you'd get £103. With a triple leverage ETF, however, the gains are magnified by 3, which means you'd get a 9% return and you'd end up with £109. Let's assume the day after, the index loses 3 points again and goes back to 100. With a normal ETF, you'd go back to £100 as well, so no change there. With a triple leverage ETF, however, you'd lose more and go below your original investment amount. That's because from 103 to 100, that's a 2.91% drop, which when multiplied by 3, gives 8.73% drop. When you subtract 8.73% from the £109 earned previously, you're left with £99.48. And that's just one day. Over time, those losses will compound and could erode a lot of gains. Because the returns are delivered on a daily basis, it is often put forward that leverage ETFs are meant for short-term trading only, as in the long run, you run the risk of value erosion, which people refer as decay. Just imagine that scenario earlier played itself continuously, whereby one day's gain is offset by the next day's losses. In an ordinary ETF, you'd end up with the same place you started. With a leverage ETF, however, your value keeps declining every time. But let's be clear here, I'm not saying it's not possible to magnify returns using a leverage ETF because you definitely can, but it's not strictly X times the return over the long run. Let's illustrate this using a practical example. Say you invested a thousand pound annually in an S&P 500 ETF from July 2009 until December 2022. This is what your portfolio would look like and its value at the end would be just over £37,000. So far so good and I'm using this as the benchmark. Now say instead you wanted to invest in a triple leverage S&P 500 ETF, meaning it would amplify the daily returns by three times. Well, this is how it would perform you can see significant outperformance of the leverage ETF with its end value at £117,000. Ironically, that's almost three times the value of the ETF, but you can clearly see in the past when it massively outperformed the benchmark. Now, you have to have an iron stomach to withstand such volatility. Look at what happened in March 2020 when Covid hit, your portfolio would have been around 100k and dropped to 35k. But if you held, the leverage ETF really took advantage of the upward recovery and compounded daily returns hitting a peak of 233k compared to the 43k benchmark. Now that's over 5 times the benchmark, but as the prices came down, it crashed again to 85k. Now let's do the same thing with the Nasdaq 100 ETF, which is a lot more volatile. Here the benchmark is the Invesco Triple Q ETF, and the portfolio consists of the Triple Leverage T Triple Q shares. Over almost the same period, if you invested £1,000 annually since March 2010, you'd end up with 43 k in December 2022. With the leverage ETF, you'd end up with 164 k so almost four times the value. 
and at its peak it was almost 10 times the benchmark index fund. That's crazy. Now I know this looks enticing because you probably think what if you invested here? But hold on, what if you invested here? Well, you probably wouldn't enjoy the 70% drop in value that followed. The other thing we need to mention is typically the expense ratio for these leverage ETFs are higher. For example, the Nasdaq 100 ETF, the benchmark index fund had an expense ratio of 0.2%, whereas the leverage ETF expense ratio was 0.86. So now you know what leverage ETFs are and why it's not strictly X times the returns of the benchmark index fund. You also saw how the volatility is crazy with the leverage ETF and definitely not for the faint hearted. But if you can stomach the drops and the increased risk, then the leverage ETF could deliver some interesting returns. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, remember to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching and see you next time.